Well, hey folks, how's it all going? Welcome back in Old Man in the Land of Grills. We're doing a challenge cook today. A lot of you have asked, said, you know, hey Tom, can you do a challenge cook? You know, do something like, you know, challenge between the 22 inch SNS Grills kettle, which is new in the market. And what's also new in the market is this new Weber Master Touch Premium. And even though I've done some mods to that one, none to this one yet, I've actually taken a shelf off uh, SNS Grill and put it on the Weber. Tom Horseman, YouTube, you want to see that? But we are going to do a challenge today. Everybody said, you know, everybody always wants you to do brisket. And brisket is still, in my part of the country here in the Midwest, brisket is still really, really expensive. But I did find two pork butts on sale, buck ninety nine a pound. That's a sale for where I am. I'm sure where you are, you get it cheaper or maybe a little bit more. I don't know. But we're going to do two pork butts today, one on the Weber Premium Master Touch. We're going to use the original equipment that came with it. Now I'm gonna use the original charcoal basket with the diffuser plate. Now, if you watched my channel, channel, you know that I wasn't really overly thrilled with the fact that Weber's not selling that product. A lot of you want them, including myself. So I made my own. And once again, Tom Horseman YouTube, I'll leave a link down below as to how I built that. Uh, but we're gonna use the original equipment on this one. And we're gonna use the slow and sear on this one. We're gonna do them both indirect. And we're gonna try and use, we're gonna use the same charcoal. And I'm trying to get the same amount of charcoal in the Weber in the uh, Weber basket as I do in the slow and sear. So I tell you what, why don't you go take a look at those two pork butt? And uh, while you're doing that, I'll get this all set up. All right, folks. So I'm going to do some trimming on this, and I've got the fat cap up on both of them. I've already trimmed as much as the fat cap off on this one. I got to do that one yet. I'm going to cook them fat cap down. Uh, there's enough internal internal fat on a pork butt that there's, in my opinion, there's no reason to cook them fat cap up. And if you want to save yourself some cleanup. Uh, and not have a whole lot of grease going around in your grill. Trim off as much as that bottom of the fat cap. Some people, if they're cooking more direct heat, will sometimes leave the fat cap on and then leave that kind of like as a barrier to protect their meat, but they also risk having a flare-up. So uh, it's easier to clean up in the end, so trim off as much as that fat cap as you, as you can. So get this trimmed up, and then I'll show you what I'm going to season it with. All right, got them all seasoned up. If you're wondering what I'm using, I'm using this pork barrel barbecue all-American seasoning rub. Got this uh, at Sam's Club quite a while ago, folks. I don't know if they still sell it there, but if you can find it, good stuff. Let's get around the grill. All right, before we get fired up, let's take a look at what we're using. Obviously, the B&B love this stuff. Hotter, longer, cleaner. Folks, <laughs> if you can find this stuff, uh, if you were anywhere where there's an academy sports, that's what I'm told is that they carry this. Uh, the rest of the country, Ace Hardware does carry these, but... Search online first, folks. Your Ace Hardware, they got an Ace Hardware app, and you can actually see what your local Ace Hardware has in stock for these. And that's how I found these. I had to actually go quite a few miles in order to find these. Here in the Midwest, not so easy to find, but if you can, oh, good stuff. So 60 briquettes, what I'm using tonight. On the Weber, I was able to lay them flat, and I got them too high, and I got a piece of uh, hickory in there. And then I got 60 also in the Sloan's here. I didn't stack them in there, just dumped them in there, counted them. And I got a piece of hickory in there. I'm going to start in that corner. And then here I'm going to start in the middle. So it's enough about that. I've got, obviously, my diffuser plate. I'm going to cover that. And aluminum foil, if you watch Tom Horseman YouTube, I actually used that as a griddle. And it actually worked. Uh, did some uh, did some flat top burgers on there. And boy, I was surprised. It turned out pretty decent. And uh, using the dripping griddle, going to cover that in aluminum foil too on the slow ones here. So there's the setup. Let's get them fired up. All right, folks, getting ready to put the lid down, got them both on there. Uh, full disclosure here, this one is a little bit bigger than that one. As you can see, there's almost a pound difference. This one being bigger on the Sloan's here as opposed to the Weber. And that, that'll probably play a little bit of difference since that one's bigger. But uh, we're going to close down these, low, these lids and we're not going to do anything. We'll adjust the lids and the bottom events as needed, but we're not going to open them up for four hours. So see you in four hours. All right, folks, it's not four hours, but I just thought I'd let you see uh, after about an hour how we got it all dialed in here. You can see we got nice smoke rolling out of both units. Uh, bottom vent on the SNS grill is totally closed, and we are using the smoke hole. See it right there? There's the old smoke hole. Now, folks, um, I got something really exciting coming for this grill to put in that smoke hole, so I'm looking forward to that. Our lid tent right now is reading um, two. Oh, nope. Show you too. Hey? <laughs> About 225. Um, there's the vent. And then on the Weber, I've got the bottom vent set to the smoke setting. Remember, on this style grill on the Weber Master Touch uh, Premium, they have the P slots on the bottom, meaning that it looks like a P. 
and when you put it on the smoke setting just that little P the little thing from the P shows um, I know that it makes sense the lid temp says there's one thing I've noticed about this grill is uh, that is always really low I, I've had a down at the grill side and 150 there is probably closer to 225 so when I do have the uh, top end daisy wheel about a half and we're just gonna like I said four hours I ain't opening this four hours check both grills over now I did put a gasket on the lid of the Weber the SNS comes with one and I did put that on too and it just helps to ensure that you get a really good seal and you know looking around both grills here you know we've got no real gasps of smoke coming out from the lid so you know they both they both look good so give you a look see at four hours all right folks two and a half hours into it uh, i'm not going to open it up i said four hours uh in that beautiful site two beautiful grills i'll tell you uh, i just want to show you you know when you make adjustments with these type of grills make them don't make really huge adjustments minor adjustments and then give it some time to even out and both these grills like i said i just left them alone kind of and uh we're running right around a little above 200 on the SNS and the Weber is running just about the same, uh, just right around 200. Like I said, I'm a little suspect of that uh, thermometer that hasn't been overly accurate. The one on the SNS has been pretty much, pretty much on. So keep on going here. Like I said, four hours is when we're gonna take a look see. All right, folks, not quite four hours, about 15 minutes shy of it, uh, but I gotta run some errands. So we'll give you a, a quick look see. Both grills are performing very, very well. You know, four hours into it, uh, temperatures have been pretty steady. Uh, Weber uh, did even out, it says 200, but I believe it's actually higher than that. that like I said, I, I believe grill grade temperature is about 50, 50 degrees higher than what it says there. But let's take a look. Oh yeah, looking mighty nice, starting to get a little bark there. See some of the fat is starting to drip down and you can hear it sizzle. And then let's take a look at the uh, SNS. Uh, also running, I, I believe that gauge is more accurate and it says right around 250. So if my thoughts are the same, they're both running right around 250. Take a quick look. Oh yeah, same thing, nice little color going on there. Uh, you can see how far we are with the B&B, &B. not quite half yet, so that's good. It's just about four hours and we haven't even burnt half of the 60 that we put in there. So keep on going here, give you a look see in about two hours. All right, folks, I said six hours is actually six and a half. Let's take a quick look. Put the one on the Weber first. Or this is the smaller one. I did put a, I have these pucks from Oklahoma Joe to see what the temp really is. And you can see we're 225. And uh, boy, I tell you what, that's got some beautiful color on it. So let's take a look at the uh, SNS grills. And uh, that nice color there, and that one's running 275. So I don't know how accurate these pucks are, and it could be placement too, but there's like a 50 degree difference there. We will keep on going, and actually, to be honest with you, if the temperature's higher on this one, I like it because remember, this one is about a pound bigger than that one is. So keep on going here. Uh, give you a look see as we proceed. All right, folks, a little over nine hours now. At eight hours, I checked the charcoal on both grills and uh, I, I knocked down the ash in the uh, Sloan's here. Added about uh, 15 more charcoal briquettes. So it's just still burning fine, but I don't want to have an issue here because it's starting to get late. And did the same thing with the Weber. Pulled off the fuser plate. Uh, we were burnt all the way to that outside ring halfway through. Knocked down the ash, put about 15 more in there. So. You know, we could let, just let it go, but like I said, I, I don't want to wait all night for some delicious pulled pork. So let's take a quick look. See so what we're doing. We'll start with the Sloan's here. Oh man, look at that. Temp right there is saying about 300. Nice, I turned things up. And on the Weber, let's take a look at the Weber. Master touch. Yeah. Oh man, a little less than 300. Nice color on there. Keep on going. We're getting close here, folks. Uh, we're going to give you a look-see here maybe one more time before we pull them off and uh, let them rest for a bit. Uh, just some thoughts here. You know, we're looking at the Weber and it looks like there's smoke coming out of there. 
and we're clear coming out of the yes and ask griddle. You know, there is a difference here, um, indirect using the diffuser plate. The diffuser plate is right underneath the charcoal. So what you're seeing there is really just grease uh, that's hitting down and then hot and then, you know, it sizzles and that's what you're seeing there. Whereas on the SNS, you're not seeing that because it comes to the, the uh, it's indirect, the heat over there, meat over there, drip pan down there. And uh, you don't get that high heat. You know, sometimes that's not the most pleasant over there. So even though this is working well, that's just my opinion. All right, folks, coming up on 10 hours, here's the outside temperature. Let's take a look at the SNS. Showing 300 degrees right there. Goes in pretty nice. It's about 200. Really close. Nice bark, oh man. 206, 207. So we're getting close there, probably another, you know, two or three, a lot of people like that number. I like to either closer to 210, 220. So we are almost there on this one. Let's take a look at the other one. All right, on the Weber, let's take a look. It says we're about 300. Nice looking color there. No, not quite 200 yet. We're getting there. 194. So how far? This side feels really nice, yeah. Uh, 206, 207 right there. So this top part here is not done yet. So we're gonna keep on going here. Okay, I'll tell you what, we'll keep on going, give you a look, see. These are about an hour away from being done. Oh man, two pulled pork sandwiches, folks. <laughs> Turned out great. Total time, here's the bones pulled right out. There's, there's over uh, <laughs> almost 12 hours there, folks. And it turned out great. Didn't do any covering, just cooked it the way it was. And you can see right there, nice looking pulled pork. Take a little bite here. Tell you what, why don't we just take one piece right here. Mmm, yeah, bark, mmm. That's good stuff right there, folks. Tom Horseman on YouTube. Thumbs up, leave a comment. As always, I'm going to eat. Thanks for watching.